Last time on Shadow Peace, we continued to follow the circumstances of the Egghead incident. While Vegapunk managed to safely escape, the same can't be told about the world government and marine forces. In the end, they suffered casualties in the six-digit area. However, to the five elders, those numbers are insignificant. They still have three Seraphim at their disposal, and that is worth way more than any 100,000 soldiers could ever be. There is, however, one thing that they regret losing, and that is the version of the Mother Flame that was located on Egghead Island. Now they only have the other version that was used to erase the island Lulusia from the annals of history. This marks the end of the story Vegapunk is telling to the revolutionary army commanders and the people at the very top of the army. Because of their security system on the future islands, they were capable of following everything that happened, and even the warships have some punk technology inside of them, allowing them to track the movement of the Buster Call even after they left the island. It is no surprise that everyone reacts shocked. This was a massive massacre and it also explains how they can justify putting such a massive bounty on the punk's heads without creating a disturbance in the public. Dragon leaves out a sigh before taking over the room's atmosphere. He is a very charismatic man, which always made him the perfect choice to be the leader of such an operation. But considering recent events, the chief of staff Sabo isn't lacking behind either. <sighs> I guess it is unavoidable now. The winds of change have to act now. It isn't like the revolutionary army hasn't done anything before, and yet nothing they have done could ever be compared to a full-on war against the marine forces. The son of the monkey family doesn't stop talking here. Eva, I know it is drastic, but produce enough hormones to increase the power of all our fighters. They will understand that there is no other way. We have to ignore the consequences in this moment. Mole, turn this island into a fortress. I know it will take a while, and it will also exhaust you before the battle, but Eva will return all the energy with their hormones. I mean, it will take a strain on your body, but it's the only thing we can do. Karasu, use your powers to scout and tell me about any enemy ships as soon as they enter my range. Lindbergh, maybe you can create something with the punks. Any sort of firepower is appreciated. And lastly, Bello. Go gather any civilians present on the island that are willing to join the battle, but make it clear to them that many will die. This is not a small-scale revolution. This is THE revolution we have been preparing for since day one. Everybody knows how serious the situation is. This is what they have been waiting for. On the mention of firepower, Lilith's eyes turn into stars, and she decides to join Lindbergh in creating more weapons for the revolutionary army. Karasu also immediately reacts, sending out crows made from a suit to cover everything in a 100 km radius. Edison and Shaka stay for strategic discussions, while everyone else leaves to do what their leader told them to do. Once only Edison, Shaka, Dragon and Sabo were left, the main body of the Vegapunks, who remained silent through all of this, decided to speak up. It is wrong for me to decide what it means to be good or evil. If I have an idea for something new, I just want to create it, no matter of its benefits or potential dangers. The people present in the room are listening closely. Vegapunk is the true definition of a scientist, and nothing will change that. But where is he going with this speech? After we have left and destroyed Eckert, the robot should have sunk into the deepest parts of the ocean, together with the transponder snail I put into it. Sabo and Dragon have no clue of what the old genius is talking about, but from the reactions of the two satellites present, it must be something very serious. So serious, in fact, that Shaka can't stay quiet. Vegapunk, stop right now. The situation may look desperate, but the world isn't ready, and for the good of the people, you can't do that either. As if things weren't serious enough already, Vegapunk has come to the decision that now is the time for him to act as well, and he won't let anyone change his mind. Shaka, Edison, and even you, Dragon. You all have been good to me, but my time has come. I am old, and with my heart, I couldn't continue for much longer anyways. So let me choose when to end it myself. My time on this planet should end now. To people lacking critical information, this just looks like Vegapunk wants to die now that he lost everything, but it is so much more. The tense energy from the headquarter building can be felt by anyone, even regular passerbys notice the aura coming off of it. And seeing all the commanders rush around the island further accentuates that something big is approaching. 
Morley is the one that makes it the most obvious. She is nervous and doesn't want to disappoint anyone. Strategically creating earth walls by pushing land masses will decrease their vulnerability. Funneling all the enemy's ships to a single location is a valid strategy in war, but that leaves them open for attacks from below or maybe even above. There is no such thing as a foolproof plan. And this is the best idea she can come up with at the moment. To begin with, there aren't that many people that can fly or dig through the ground. And if some people want to gapo over the earth walls, well, they should be able to shoot them down before they turn into actual dangers. Karasu is one potential aerial combatant, but right now he is acting as a scout for the revolutionary army. Soot crows hidden within the clouds are surrounding the island. Even though they are separated from him, all of these crows are still a part of his body, so he can use his observation hockey to cover the whole area. With a radius of 100 km to every single site, Karasu covers over 30,000 km, making any form of surprise attack impossible. While his little crows cannot be used for any valuable long distance attacks, that was never the intention anyway. That whole area is Dragon's domain, and he will show no mercy this time. It has been a long time since the leader of the revolutionaries has fought with all his might. In general, he hasn't shown himself a lot in recent years. Most of the time, it was just the commanders, the chief of staff, or a branch faction performing revolutions outside of the main area. Because of that, some have started questioning his position as their leader. Especially newer members are a part of the doubters. However, all the high-ranking members stand behind Dragon with all of their being. Lindbergh and Lilith are also focused on their job. Adding a punk on top of the crazy inventions of the Ming scientist will increase their firepower drastically. The fact that Lilith is the satellite embodying Vegapunk's evil just makes this even more wild. Civilians with those weapons will be just as lethal as trained soldiers. The female Vegapunk would love to continue to work on what she calls Project G, her own research project independent of the other punks, but even with the things she took with her from Egghead, it isn't possible right now. So they have to compromise on a smaller project, and in the future Lindbergh wants to see what this project is all about. However, people shouldn't misunderstand. When two scientists like this come together, even a smaller project will be something crazy, something massive. Mass production for two inventions is going on in full throttle. Both are based on technology Lindbergh already created, but now they are upgraded to the max. Mobility like a pirate that made it to the new world with the Punkberg jetpack. Humanity may not have been born with the ability to fly, but now they have taken to the sky, ready to conquer even the heavens. And that is only the first invention. Using the data of Kizaru's light laser and then combining it with Lindbergh's own laser invention, the Ikbat was born. An easy to handle ranged laser weapon that has more power than the casual attack Kizaru used as a reference in the past. With this, civilians wouldn't even have to fear Yonko commanders, is what the scientists tell others. But obviously, that's just when it comes to firepower alone. They still have to hit the target and it also is a slight exaggeration to give them more hope and courage in these dark and trying times. A lot of preparations are being done in a short amount of time. And all of this was taking place at the same time as our group of heroes spent their casual time in the Prodan's kingdom. The timelines are overlapping. Vegapunk's decision to choose death and the battle between Loki and Anastasius are happening around the same time. With this, we have reached the end of the interlude of Vegapunk and the Revolutionary Army. We are looking at developments that will change the entire world. And even though this world is different from the One Piece we know, certain things are still happening in both stories. Next time, we will return to the main characters and the church opening. But until then, all that's left to be said is stay happy, stay healthy, and most importantly, stay cultured. Pyro, out. Bye.